When I visit my favorite Chinese restaurant, you know, I may change up my entree here and there, but there's one staple that never changes, pot stickers. These delicious meatballs wrapped in a pasta-like wrapper, they're an irresistible combination of supple and crispy. Few of my meals start without them. These can be somewhat intimidating to master, but luckily I met Helen, the dumpling queen. On a visit to see my brother, I was treated to some inspiring and delicious Chinese dishes. I was also fortunate enough to enjoy Helen's pot sticker recipe. While I never really got into specifics, I made plenty of mental notes and did my homework to make sure these are as true to Helen's as I could make. This is Kitchen Serious. First things first, the wraps. Should you make your own or just buy the ready-made ones at the store? Well, you definitely save a ton of time by buying them, but it can be hit and miss. If possible, make a trip to an Asian grocery store for the best results. For me, in making this video, well, the choice was easy. Start with two cups of all-purpose flour with a pinch of salt. To that, we're gonna add two-thirds cup of very hot water. The water I used was just under boiling, so it's gonna be pretty hot, but will cool down quickly. I'll use a wooden spoon to kind of get everything sort of started and then I'll throw some kitchen gloves on and get it into one big mass. So once it's in one cohesive ball, knead it for about 10 minutes until it gets pretty smooth. Then throw some plastic wrap around it and let it rest for a couple hours. Better yet, just do this the day before so it's ready for you when you actually want to make the dumplings. Either way, we'll have plenty of time to make our filling. I do have 1.4 pounds of pork rather than the normal pound, so rather than peel off 0.4, I'm just gonna add a little bit extra to my filling. So using an eighth of a cup, I'm gonna add apple cider vinegar for some sweetness. Follow that up with just under an eighth cup of sesame oil. And for some added sweetness, I decided to go with some hoisin sauce. Don't forget the salt and pepper. You'll see white pepper predominantly used in a lot of Chinese cooking, but here I'm just using some cracked black. And our final wet ingredient will be some soy sauce. Now let's move on to our chopped ingredients. To the pork, I'm gonna add two cups of finely chopped regular green cabbage. I would prefer to use Chinese or Napa cabbage, but this is all the store had, so we're gonna just roll with this. I did use a food processor to make things a whole lot easier. Now we're gonna peel and finally dice a big old knob of ginger. Now there's a lot of techniques for peeling, but I prefer a simple spoon. Next up, a healthy tablespoon of chopped garlic and four to five finely chopped green onions. You might see ingredients like green onions, spring onions, and scallions. These are actually all the same thing. What you call them depends on the age of the onion and how large the bulb at the end is. A green onion or scallion are, well, they're literally the same. It depends on how your grocer labels them. They're picked early and will have a very slender bulb that isn't really a bulb at all. It's the white root is about the same width as the rest of the plant. As the green onion ages, the bulb grows in size relative to the stalk and you get spring onions, which are harvested later in the season and have a stronger flavor. I don't get too technical in naming these because I do use them interchangeably in recipes, but I thought you might like a little clarification on how they're named. It's a great conversation starter at parties. Let me know how it goes. Okay, so now we're adding everything into our pork, the green onion, the garlic, and the MVP, in my opinion, the fresh chopped ginger. And let's not forget about the two cups of the cabbage. Now we get to have a little fun and get those mitts in there and get everything nice and incorporated. With the filling out of the way, I'm gonna put some plastic on and throw it in the fridge until we're ready for it. And we're gonna head back to our dough. We're gonna give it one final knead and then let it rest 30 minutes before we work with it. You'll see the dough is nice and springy and ready to work. You don't want this drying out, so divide this into quarters and then just work with one quarter at a time. All right, so now we need to portion our wrappers. While many use the bagel method, I just prefer to roll out a cylinder shape to about one inch in diameter. Do your best to keep it as uniform as possible. Now you can start dividing up your dough into individual portions. 
keep uniformly dividing until you're left with pieces that are about one inch in length. Again, only work with a few at a time while the others camp out under a damp towel or plastic wrap. I will say though, these are very large, which I kind of planned for teaching purposes. So the first thing we're gonna do is try to roll this out with a traditional roller. And because the circumference of the roller is so big, you can't quite get where you need to be. So it really helps to have a dumpling roller. So let's take a look at that. You'll notice it's really small and it can reach the center of each disc without any problems. So besides using the right size rolling pen for these, the best advice I can give is to make sure and get it into a disc shape first before you start rolling. If you start with a misshapen blob, when you roll it out, you're just gonna have a larger misshapen blob. So try to start with a nice round shape first before you start rolling it out. It's also important to note that I am left-handed, so I'm gonna be doing the turning with my left hand and the rolling with my right. So your dominant hand will be doing the turning as you roll. After the first revolution, and there'll be a little hump in the middle. That's when you do one more pass where you move the roller all the way to the middle. And hopefully at the end, you have something that kind of resembles a circle. Trust me when I say this, this takes a lot of practice. I'm not even gonna share with you how many times I've rolled off camera to make it look this average. I'm just glad there's no direct correlation between the roundness and taste. So once you get about six or so done, it's time to do the filling. Besides putting the pretty pleats on these things, the biggest challenge I have is not overfilling these, so try to resist the urge to put too much. Leave a lot of area so you can do your folds. This is just too much filling here. Now folding these is a whole nother skill set. Let's take a look at some footage I got of the Dumpling Queen folding hers. A couple things to note right off the bat is that she does have pre-made wrappers, which she saved herself a ton of time. But because they are store-bought, they're gonna be on the dry side, so she keeps a little bowl of water there to wet the edges. Now, these are also a lot more traditional in size. Mine are monsters. And you'll also notice that she's cut the corners off the squares, making it a whole lot easier to fold. So if we slow this down and take a look at her technique, you can see that she's not overfilling and she wets the edges to make sure she's got a good seal. Also take note of where her left thumb goes once the folding begins. She's gonna keep it on the inside and once she seals the outside corner, she's now gonna create the pleats with her thumb and her right index finger. You can see the thumb pushes in and she makes the pleat. Pushes in, pushes over and the right seals it up. Followed by a final seal on the end. Look at that, it's beautiful. That's why she's the dumpling queen, folks. So now we move over to slow-mo the way I do it, and we begin by overstuffing the dumpling. Hopefully not too bad. And my over-caffeinated shaky hands here. And I didn't overstuff enough, so I decided to put a little bit more in. Why not? Um, so we're going to start with her technique, and then we're going to do a technique I thought was a little easier for me. Maybe it was because I was overstuffing my dumplings, but we fold them over. I've got my right thumb inside, which since I'm left-handed, that's correct. And I, well, proceed to not use my right thumb at all. I'm pushing, there we go. We seal and then yeah, now we're, uh, okay, sort of. My thumb just doesn't want to work, but I guess I'm sort of making the pleats, but not exactly how Helen was doing it. And we got one more to go, and there we go. We finally got it done. All I can say is that I tried my best, and that is a monster pot sticker. Now here's a technique I've seen others use that I'm gonna try that I just personally found a little bit easier, since there's no right or wrong. At the end of the day, just get the damn thing sealed, fried up, and it's gonna taste delicious. But let's face it, we all want it to look pretty, right? So for this particular technique, I'm actually gonna start and seal the middle. This just kind of helps me get my spacing better. So I'm gonna start with the middle and then with my left index finger, I'm just gonna kind of tuck it in there. And with my right index, we're just gonna kind of make the pleats this way. And yeah, this gets the job done. And there's two pleats on either side of center. 
So that's what I tried to do, try to get a nice big pleat, fold it over, and then seal the end. Not terrible, not great, but not terrible. It still looks uh, sort of like a pot sticker, but personally I found that technique to be a little bit easier. Now let's move on to cooking these up. So we're going to add some oil to our wok that's about medium high heat. Once that oil shimmers, we're ready to go. So I'm gently going to set those pot stickers in the oil. Try not to overcrowd these. Now for the potential dangerous part. We're going to be pouring about a quarter cup of water into hot oil. And, and anyone who's ever accidentally gotten water and oil knows what happens. But you need to have a lid ready. So you basically want to have this as a shield and uncover just enough to get that water in there. I wish I could find the cover of my wok, but my stock pot has a lid that will suffice. So now we kind of have a dual cooking method going. As the water evaporates, the oil is going to get closer and closer to the bottom. So after about five minutes, we'll take the lid off and let the water completely evaporate, leaving just the oil. The oil is then going to finish off the dumplings and crisp up the bottoms. Let's take a look here. And you can see that, oh man, that is perfect. You want a nice deep golden brown and it's gonna be nice and crispy and the rest of the dumpling gonna be chewy. That is how you wanna do it. Oh, all that's left is to enjoy with your favorite sauce. I like to keep it simple. This is just a little chili oil with some soy sauce and a little crushed red pepper flake. Okay, and if you're one of the brave ones and you wanna try this out yourself, here is your shopping list. Thanks for checking out Kitchen Serious. I will see you guys next time.